about to point it. All right, so for this episode, we're gonna be starting it off with something a little different. Uh, might be a little too inside baseball for some of you out there in the audience, but I think I get so many questions about exactly how we're doing this that that's what we're gonna do today. Kind of go into how we're picking these lines, how we're driving across the country, and how we're essentially making our evaluations to have safe and successful days. So the first thing I do is I check this app on the daily basis called Avalanche, it's in the iOS store. And essentially what this app does is it uh, takes every single Avalanche forecast from around the nation and puts it on a map and then color codes it. So I can essentially see where is generally stabilizing versus where is generally unstable. Uh, it's something that I get to learn just kind of what the trends are doing nationwide. The second thing I do is essentially I'm looking at trends, but for weather instead of stability. I'm looking at all across North America and seeing on average, where is it gonna be less stormy versus more stormy. The third thing I do is I, once I figure out those weather trends, I start to narrow it down. I use this website called SpotWX and it gives you a bunch of different forecasts that are pretty complex and hard to read. It takes some time to understand them. And I narrow it down to very specialized regions, essentially the regions that I think are gonna have good weather. So the fourth thing I do is once I start to kind of narrow down on a potential zone that we could go to, I start emailing people from that zone. Uh, it could be avalanche forecasters, fellow athletes, just friends. Essentially, I write them like, hey, what's going on? What have you been finding in that zone? Uh, these people are pretty, pretty essential to making our decisions. The fifth thing I do is I call those same people. Uh, emails don't always get you the exact information you need, so I wanna get them on the phone, start talking to them, and ask as many questions as I can, which is going on with the snowpack and the lines we're looking to do in that region. Have a good rest of your day. The sixth thing I do is essentially I do a deep dive in the avalanche forecast. After talking to locals from the zone and getting some beta from them, I essentially want to go deep into the forecast myself. Uh, so I'll go deep into the web pages of an avalanche forecast center, read observations, read old reports, and essentially try and uh, understand the snowpack from an outside perspective after talking to people and after looking at the trends. Seventh thing, well, that's make a decision, whether to pull the trigger or not. And yesterday, we pulled the trigger, drove nine hours, and got to the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho, where we stand right now, which is now the day before we want to attempt a line, and we're doing our very first step on our day before process, which is get visual observation of the line we want to ski. The main things I'm looking at is trying to look for texture and sloughs. The second thing I do in this day before we attempt a line process is make more calls. Essentially talk to the people I talked to before and maybe meet new people from like the Avalanche Forecasting Center or just people at the trailhead and get as much beta as possible. So if all signs are pointing yes, it's a go, we think we're gonna go for an attempt. The third thing I do is start planning out the day. And the way I plan that day out is by looking at the stats of the mountain, of going to mapping technology and drawing out paths and trying to figure out how long of an approach we have and how much vertical feet we are going to cover so they can estimate what time to start, what time we're gonna finish. The fourth thing I do, once you start figuring out the route, is trying to figure out what kind of gear I need. First would be skis. If it's gonna be powdery and soft, do I bring something fat like the QST 118s? Or is it gonna be variable, so I bring the QST 106s? Or is it gonna be a huge long day and super hard pack, so I bring the MTN 95s? Uh, from there, you gotta figure out, do you need crampons? Do you need ice axes? Do you need a rope? Do you need a glacier kit? Just go through all those decisions. Uh, even figuring out what clothes to wear. Is it gonna be warm? Is it gonna be cold? And just going through that in your head, what's gonna set you up the best for success the next day. Well, the last thing, last thing I do is, once we're done packing the bags, set the alarms, and Go give that line an attempt. So let's go do it. Let's go give it an attempt. Mount McGowan. Oh, buenos dias. Well, from all our research, all signs seem to be pointing yes. So today we're gonna to be giving Mount McGowan an attempt. 
And I say an attempt because it's always an attempt. We're gonna be evaluating the pretty much whole way up. But for today, to get there, we've got about a six and a half mile approach. Three and a half miles of it, we're going to be doing on snowmobiles, which is really nice. I guess it's the local tradition. Uh, we're going to be doing about 3,700 vert up to about a top out at 9,800 feet. And the couloir back down on the northeast side is around 40 to 45 degrees. Um, today, we got some buddies from Tahoe. We got Ming Poon who drove out here. Now catch him local, Tahoe <laughs> local, Tucker Patton. Let's go do it. My hands went completely numb and now they're coming back and it hurts so bad. Screaming barfies suck so bad. How's it going with the cold? Uh, it's great now that we're in the sun. It's been such a cold start to the day. I think we're moving slow because of that, but important. You don't want to lose any fingers or toes or your nose. I think I had white fingers, you had a white nose. What are those mornings? But getting our first look at the line and just kind of, you know, as we make our way up, I'm always kind of observing not only just the line, but everything around, seeing Seeing what I see, you know, wind effect, is there any pluming, is there any signs of fractures, what's the temperature like, start to process it in as we continue to move up. Um, yeah, we'll be under the main line here pretty shortly, a little bit more touring through the trees. All signs continue to point well. I think we'll just, as you get closer, start to figure things out. There's a little less snow down here than I expected. To be honest, that's my only unexpected. I think up high looks really good, the cool hour looks great conditions seem really good no wind and uh, I feel good I feel yeah sure. I mean it was windy two days ago like real windy so yeah like when I was driving up a couple of days ago yeah it was pretty windy full light like it almost looks like borderline sastrugi at the bottom yeah borderline <laughs> it's like California <laughs> yeah Eastern Sierra right now <laughs> yeah cool huh Conditions so far, like down low, seem great, like powdery, but I'm seeing some pretty heavy wind effect on kind of the talus, the apron of the couloir, so maybe up high it'll be okay. Not too loaded. We'll find out when we get there. Found Ben out here from last night. <laughs> <laughs> he showed up. So we'll go up that together. The apron doesn't look so hot, but the upper section actually looks decent. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys think about, I mean, it's kind of interesting when you're climbing up, you're trying to evaluate how the skiing is going to be on the way down. Is that something you guys think about when you climb up? Yes. The entire day is spent in your head thinking about what you're going to encounter on both the way up and the way down. And going up couloirs is always the trickiest because, you know, essentially you have this hallway that can come down on you. So you're constantly going up, digging little hasty pits, evaluating every step and see how the snow changes. Um, I don't know, at least that's what I do, what you do, man. Yeah, similar. <laughs> Yeah. I and just like to feel the snow. Like you got to feel one side, like Cody was saying. Like if that side kind of might feel weird, and this might ski better. And you're just gonna, it might be easier up, and then better skiing down. So definitely thinking about that as far as from start to finish. And definitely like coming out hot out the bottom. That thing's rugged down there. There's old heavy debris. There's wind skin. There's rocks. Like 
Yeah, there's no straight line into that. No, all that's in the back of your head for sure. Yeah. They, they sure make nice footholds. Yeah. <laughs> You can feel that, huh? That little slab right there, just this pocket. Up to the top right there, just to the left. And then we can just go one at a time through here. And it's just little pockets. All things wind ripped, but filled in right over here, right into here. You just gotta be careful with that, so. Sick! <laughs> Son, yeah, took a break. <laughs> yeah, Cody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Pretty straightforward and skin should be good. Fired up. Should be rad. One of the raddest things about Idaho is just how big and empty it is. And like, you get out here to the top of this and you look around and there's just no one here. It's insane. Have a snack. Enjoy the day. Have a good ski. So is that the next step? Enjoy the view and have a snack. Yeah. You know, this is why I named my production company Summit Lunch Productions. You're on the summit, you have lunch. Favorite thing in the world. Ah, not so bad. Now this is where it's gonna get tricky. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> About to point it. Check it out. Sick day, super fun, just good to get out. Stoked to be on number 25. It's pretty rad, I'm pretty stoked for you guys and proud of what you guys have accomplished. <laughs> hey, with the boys in the mountains, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that is how we are doing the 50. And that is how we are currently at a halfway point. But in number only, I wouldn't say we're actually in the... If you had to weight it on a curve, we got some heavy ones and it pulls it all the way back down a little bit. So, some big heavy ones left. But, 25. 25 in a year and a month. 